You are watching a master at work. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever time you are watching this. This is Sam Prentice makes things happen. I'm Sam Prentice back once again making it happen. And today we're looking at the Mintian Beagle camera. Now, I don't know a huge amount about this, but I can assume from the packaging that it is a web camera for your 3D printer. But not just that, it also has a variety of different things that are available on it, like auto time lapses, which is something I'm quite interested in. So let's get straight on into it. So here it is, the Mintian Beagle camera. Um, again, there isn't much to it on this packaging. Uh, the packaging basically states that it's plug and play, anywhere, uh, anytime, auto time lapses, uh, compatibility, browser access, temp monitoring. It's called the Beagle. It's a 1080p camera with auto time lapse function and it supports 2.4 gig. It's plug and play and weighs 150 grams. There isn't too much more to it than that. On the back here, there is a little QR code that basically takes you to their website. So let's have a look and see what we've got on the inside. Oh, ah, here we go. So inside we have a little instruction manual and this little camera. Look at that. Very nice too. So exploring the Beagle. The Beagle camera is actually powered by a 5 volt 1 amp adapter. On some of my power leads I have a 5 volt output so it's been really easy and I've been quite lucky just to be able to plug the camera straight into one of those and allow it to connect to the Wi-Fi. The USB socket on the back is used actually to connect the camera to your printer and the cable supplied as default is a micro B. So if you have a printer with a type B plug, you might have to find that old blue cable that came with pretty much every printer that's been manufactured over the last three years, or buy a type A to type B plug. The SD card is already installed inside of the device, and in this case, it's a 32 gigabit card that I believe can be upgraded to a 64 and perhaps higher, but I'll look to try and test that later. Now the instruction manual is pretty self-explanatory. It outlines the cable types and how to reset the camera should you need to. The unit also has a microphone and speaker inside. So if you want to hear the soothing sounds of your 3D printer whirring back and forth, you can from anywhere. The camera also has infrared built in. So if you're looking to print in the dark, but still want to keep an eye on things, you can. No more worrying about if your print is going to be a massive failure in the morning. You can check it at any time, wherever, whenever. The lights on the back, again, are pretty simple to understand. The green light is Wi-Fi connected and is solid, otherwise flashing, and the red one is to indicate if you're connected to your 3D printer. The app is very, very simple to install, certainly on my Apple iPhone. And although when I started the install, I did have a few problems, which are actually down to the fact that the system wasn't live, as these units are brand spanking new, and they needed to activate the license. But I will say the communication has been really good from the team there, and it was resolved within a matter of hours. Now the app takes you through the process step by step on how to connect the Beagle to your Wi-Fi network. This is done pretty much in the same way as many smart home devices where you connect to the camera, then you pop in your Wi-Fi details, and then you're able to then connect back to the Wi-Fi. Again, step by step here has made this very, very simple. Also, in addition to this, you do need to set up a username and password, which will be done at the beginning of when you open the app. So in the final stages of setting up the app, and as you can see here, the camera, once it reaches 100%, it will then tell you that it's successfully connected to the network. And then it will show you a live video image of whatever the camera is then looking at. In this case, my desk. So if you have used Clipper or Octoprint before, then there does lie a certain level of competence on assuming that you know how to image an SD card and perhaps set up a number of parameters which inherently do have the occasional limiting factors. If you're looking to be able to simply control your 3D printer from your phone or desktop while viewing live footage and recording time lapses, the Beagle seems to have all the answers and at a reasonable price tag of $70. Now bear that in mind because if you're looking to buy a Raspberry Pi right now and assuming that you can find one and buy one, it's not just going to be the Raspberry Pi. You'll also need a webcam or a Pi cam along with an SD card and a power supply. What I'm saying here is that if you're just looking to capture and monitor, this could be a great alternative. So the big question of course is, is it actually any good? And it's kind of a loaded question because although the hardware is static, the software is certainly fluctuating at the moment. So I think we're at 1.0.6 at the moment, which I think is like the fourth type of software that they've brought out. And that's to combat certain things like 
um, compression on video and file size. And there's also a number of kind of things that with retraction that I've kind of come across that I think they've now kind of got to a, to a men's of fixing. So to review, this has been quite difficult because there seems to be new software coming out every week and that can only get better, right? Surely. But this is the kind of prints that I'm getting out of the machine at the moment. So this is the Wexter Darth Mole print. And as you can see here, the image quality of what we're calling an MPEG-4 movie isn't actually that great. And that's because the codec is a H.264 file, which leads to quite some serious compression. And I would say that the image quality on this is actually pretty poor. And we've also been getting some quite serious retraction issues. And that's because it's been led from the Beagle Cam not from the g-code so we're getting quite a lot of hairy models at the moment and of course it's not the 70s anymore friends hairy models are certainly out however last night i got a pm telling me that new software is available of which added further compatibility simplify 3d as a slicer added camera settings and most importantly the mpeg codec format for the camera so let's see how that looks so as you can see overall the image is much better but it's not quite perfect the weird cloud below the gantry is still a little bit annoying and as you can see there's quite a lot of light reflection there which is basically saturating the model but we do have a much cleaner model overall and here it is this is the wexter x-wing fighter which i've got to say does look very clean and concise i'll give you a nice close-up on this um, no major retraction issues on this particular model at all. Um, it does look pretty damn good. I'm uh, very, very impressed with it. So we've got work to do. I think the Beagle still has a little bit of work to do, but let's go through some positives and negatives to this camera so far. So number one, we certainly have ongoing software improvements. Quality of the hardware and adding features to the software will make this a clear winner. Number two, the interface on the web browser is actually pretty damn good, but I would like to see more in the way of features. For example, the type of time lapses taken to be more in line with Octoprint, giving you various settings and various stop points. At the moment, for example, it swings all the way forward and homes to the top left hand corner. On previous versions of the software, it's done that very, very quickly, and it's actually quite alarming to watch. They have slowed it down in these later versions of software, but elements such as PID tuning and stepper tuning would be great additions, which I think would be pretty easy to add. That all being said, though, it does come with a host of great options, and the software gives you quite a bit of simple information, such as layers, model height, file sizes, and of course, a live feed. Number three, Mintian are adding and testing more and more printers. It was interesting actually to see Prusa in that drop down window, as when I went to go and test that on a previous software version using Super Slicer, it just home constantly. It would be nice to see if this would work with a whole host of Marlin printers and of course different slicers. Number four, this is not a Raspberry Pi alternative. However, it does share some of the features that Octoprint does have. So if you're looking for 3D print monitoring, along with being able to create some cool time lapses, this is a serious contender. Mintium Beagle camera, I am quite impressed with what you've come up with so far and I will continue to keep pushing this and publishing this stuff on my Instagram and TikTok accounts. Links can be found in the description. Also, I'll put a link into where you can find one of these if you wish to purchase one of these for just shy of $70. Uh, it arrived very, very quickly from China. This has been sent to me for review and testing purposes. So thank you very much to the guys at Mintium over there. Um, yeah, what can I say? It's a pretty good camera. Um, it's very, very close to being damn near perfect so just keep going for it guys i really hope that you can get this software kind of sorted out the compression i will just say very quickly the h264 you're getting a print size um file video format of about 20 meg versus the other version which is the the main mpeg codec which is coming in around about 120 meg so there is quite a concise difference there between the two um but the image quality is certainly key so i hope this has helped you guys out one way shape or another make sure you hit a little like below any comments also go down below as well and make sure you subscribe to the channel we will see you in the next review take care over and out bye for now you are watching a master at work